we go. It is time to finally finish this incredible journey from Georgia to California to race John Chase from the Boonies. It's time to find out who built the batter gas and who's going to go home without their beer. This journey has been a bucket list for me. I've seen states I've never been to, I've made new friends, copped old cassettes, we even stopped at Cadillac Ranch and hid swag in one of the cars for a roadkill fan to find. We battled a Hemi that didn't want to stop leaking. We've laughed our butts off. And right now, we're going to go to Pomona with a group of hardcore gearheads that will not give up. Will the Hemi make it through the whole weekend? I don't know. But we're going to have fun finding out. reached the halfway point of this trip. We have driven 2,000 miles from Georgia to Arizona, and we're hanging out in Lake Havasu City, Arizona right now. My buddy Brian's shop, Dino Tuning Blasphemy. We had a little bit of downtime, so we decided let's install a gauge and a wideband O2 sensor from Holly and find out why is the ramp truck getting 5.6 miles per gallon. Let that sink in for a second. Single digits, but way down there, 5.6. That's Cli going down a mountain getting seven, climbing up the mountain getting a little over three. It's not good. And we have a few ideas why. I mean, this thing weighs about 14,000 pounds with the tools and blast me inside of it. It's also a giant box pushing through the wind, but we'd like to know more. So this little sensor here, it's gonna measure the amount of unburned oxygen in the exhaust stream. That's gonna tell us is the engine running rich or lean and very, at, at all driving conditions. No matter where the throttle's at, we can drive down the road and in real time, with that gauge know what our air fuel ratio is. What we got? There's an air fuel gauge that we're gonna hook up. It'll plug into basically this O2 sensor. It's a four wire hookup. You got your power, you got your ground, and you got your dash lights to illuminate the gauge. This right here will go to a TPS sensor that we won't be using, but it has a warning light that goes to it. Basically a plug and play and we're ready to go. Where are you going with it? Top of the column? Yeah, we put it right here. Not gonna modify the truck at all. I love it, and yet we'll still be able to see it. We're just gonna run our wiring down. How long is that uh, adapter cable? Uh, I'll have to go back and look at it. Because our O2 is actually right underneath our feet over here. So that would work out great because all we have to do is go down and out. Yeah, yeah, right through, through, a, through a factory grommet. Exactly. I don't um, think you know how to do that. I think you need. Let Uncle Bobby get in there. Mm, no, okay, Uncle Bobby. You're taking way too long. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, all of, you hole sawed it. I hole sawed this, drilled a hole in here. All we're gonna do is weld our O2 bung right in here and we should be good to go and i noticed you put it in perpendicular to the tube which is good so that yeah it's going to be they 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 want like a 10 like a 10 degree angle on this to keep moisture out of it so if moisture collects on the tip of the o2 if you put it like this it'll actually run off yeah it, you cannot put it in the bottom of the pipe no because i don't care where you are or where you're at moisture collects down yeah. in there when you park your car yep this is actually so. a really nice exhaust yeah we're going to use the Fusion 160 generator stick welder attached to the Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC. And Steve Darnell happens to be here, which is insane. And and he's gonna, yeah, he's going to literally weld her up. That's for how us. I got the name, you know. That's perfect. Weld her up because uh, people pulled to my parking lot, broke down, and I'd be like, just bring it in, we'll weld her up. That's genius. So here we are. That's Back genius. to square one again. Yeah, so we have a rock star welding on the ramp truck today. We're going to knock it out. One of the keys to a successful road trip is having everything you need in case you break down. For once, I'm prepared, all right? I have with me a Miller Fusion 160 generator stick welder. Awesome machine, extremely portable. Only weighs 222 pounds, has an onboard gas engine that has electric start, has a stick welder that you can run off that gas engine, or you can hook it to utility power. Check this out little compartment right here. Open it up, unplug the cord for the stick welder, and thanks to MVP technology, this will unthread, and you can plug this directly into a 120 volt single phase wall outlet. You can put this adapter back on, plug it into a single phase 240 volt outlet. What that allows you to do is run the onboard stick welder, which by the way has inverter technology, so this whole footprint is very small, but you can run that off of household power, or you can run it off the generator. 
If you're in a spot where you can't fire up the gas engine or you don't want to hear the generator, no problem. If you're outdoors and you need to go from one job to another, no problem. The thing is very portable. Bonus, 6,500 watts of peak electrical output. That means that if the power goes out in my house, which happens all of the time, I've got a generator powerful enough to run some of the appliances and keep my family happy. In the case of this road trip, we're bringing it with us because we need to run the Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC. We're gonna use this to do some welding on our exhaust. This machine is also very portable. Weighs under 56 pounds. It's a MIG welder, a TIG welder, a stick welder. It'll run off 120 or 240 volt output. Thanks, thanks to some of the technology that's in here, you can use the MIG gun or the TIG welder one after the other without unplugging a whole bunch of things. You can leave actually the torch and the gun plugged in at all times and the moment you pull the trigger or step on the foot pedal, the machine knows what process you're using and adjusts accordingly. With auto set alight, and you can't see any of the digital output right now because we don't have the generator running, I wanted you to be able to hear me. All you do is choose your process, turn on auto set alight, choose your material thickness, it automatically sets the weld output. So MIG welding today, it's gonna determine our voltage and wire speed for us. It's just that easy. All of this stuff is extremely portable and it's what's making this road trip a success. Lots of these O2 sensors come with anti-seize already on the threads. The Holly one's no different, but if you don't have any, please put some on. You'll thank us later. This is Loctite Quick Sticks. It is anti-seize on a stick, which is really great and uh, a lot less messy. All right, our anti-seize is on there. See how this carburetor is actually running. Yeah, gauge is all wired up, power and ground and all that. Plug in the O2 sensor and hit the road for California and find out, like you said, how's this engine running? I think it's gonna be running pretty good. I think weights are full. <laughs> and the giant box. Yeah, the box pushing through the wind is probably why this thing gets such bad mileage, but the gauge will tell us how our 454 V8 is actually running. All right, let's find out. Accelerating, here we go. 14 and a half to one air fuel ratio, 14. Let off the gas pedal here. Vacuum goes high because the throttle blade is shut. That made it go rich. Now we're pegging the gauge at 18 to one. That tells me we've got an exhaust leak ahead of the O2 sensor. And it thinks it's running really lean when it's not. There's no way we're climbing the mountain at Flagstaff, you know, at 14 to one air fuel. And although we have an exhaust leak at this engine RPM, there's an exhaust, enough exhaust speed going through the pipe that I'm betting that's a true reading probably is driving down the road at 14 and a half to one or real close to it which means you're not going to lean that out much and get better fuel economy than we're getting now so our five and a half miles per gallon driving down the highway fully loaded with all our tools and blasphemy and t-shirts and things in here and all our friends that may be it you know uh, engine tuning wise other than adjusting the ignition timing we might not get much more out of this so now question becomes, do we look at putting overdrive in here to turn our engine RPM down a little bit? That would be an interesting test. It's got 456 gears in it, and it has no shortage of power going down the road. You know, this thing trucks down the road at 80 miles an hour, fully loaded, goes up hills pretty good. If we stick overdrive in it, say like a 4L80 transmission, we could probably knock about a thousand RPM off that, but then it's so heavy, do you ever even get to use overdrive, you know, when you're driving down the road? Uh, that may not even work, I don't know, but at least for now, the Holley Wideband O2 gauge has given us an idea of the state of tune of the engine, and it's pretty good. 
I had to show you this. Ignore the propane tank, but look at the snow-capped mountains of Southern California. That's right, we made it, we're here. You got your Taco Bell, random hotels, and the new to us ramp truck, freshly washed and waxed, getting go-go juice put in. We were on the struggle bus for the last four days at Horsepower Connection, but it all came together last night. You know what the secret was? Take all the water out of the cooling system. The moment you do that, you make more power than you ever have on the dyno. 1,075 to the back tires, then we immediately pushed it into the ramp truck, hit the road and got to our hotel in Pomona at 3.30 in the morning. We now have ice. We have tired but happy faces right there. Oh yeah, we're here. And we have beer, two flavors. Enough race fuel to make three passes and beat John Chase. A 55 Chevy. Uh, uh, uh. Two passes. Well, it's, we're only, gonna it's only two out of three, dude. That's true. We're going to make a test hit, though. Okay, fine. But you're right. I say we make it three out of three. That was cocky as all hell. I say we make it three out of three. No matter what. Three out of three. I don't even care. I'm just happy to be here. We've already run into a boatload of NHRA crew members in our hotel, so yeah. we're, we're clearly in the right spot. The turbo wing is looking good. Man, I'm ready to do this, let's go. Right about now, we're crossing off another bucket list item. Racing blasphemy down the Fairplex at Pomona Drag Strip. This is gonna be incredible. Any of you guys that follow either Roadkill or Hoonigan know that these guys, will be, you know, they'll turn back and forth at each other and they'll, and they'll get together and they'll have some fun and maybe they'll do something on the internet, and maybe they'll, which is certainly gonna have a lot of views. But for both of them to be in this venue on this stage and make it happen, they're taking a whole lot more serious. A now. whole lot more serious. So this is a six-speed manual transmission of this car. It was an H-pattern shifter, and they put a vertigate in there. And as best I know, this is going to be the first drag strip run on a completely refreshed combination. By refreshed, I mean taking the dyno and broken. That was insane. Uh, I don't know if when the wheels went for the sky and I grabbed second, that I hit the chute lever, <laughs> or when I lifted off the throttle because I freaked out and it came crashing down, that the bounce was so hard that the cable came out of the parachute and that's what dropped the chute. But uh, yeah, never done that before. And um, we need a YA to calm the car down. I, I'm not leaving on a two-step. I never have with this car because I've, I've never had enough time to just whole shot it over and over again and figure out how to make the two-step work. So all I'm doing right now is right foot, you know, giving it some RPM about three grand and then just dropping the clutch. And the car has never ever wheelied like that. The, the new anti-roll bar is making it leave flatter. The shock tuning we did is making it hook. It was like a damn lever. It just stood straight up. Uh, so yeah, we, we need to test again and figure out a way to make it not do that or we're not winning this race. How you doing, John? Doing pretty good. We made it here. That's the first goal. Make it here. <laughs> the car, it's running. It's so-so, it's running, whatever. Um, I saw Mike do his, uh, his test, pulling the wheels up, pretty bananas. The track is fully prepped. Like, I've never been on a surface like this. Apparently Mike's never been on a surface like this either. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm not making any test passes today just because I still got work on my car. It's still not there yet. <laughs> what do you expect? What's under right? the hood right now? Uh, a junkyard LS. Fully junkyard. <laughs> I feel like Mike thought I was sandbagging on him on this one because I blew up. We had a mechanical failure with my other motor, which is coming back tomorrow. So, you guys connect the dots. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow night after we our first race? We're going to pull the junkyard dog out and put the bad boy motor in. How you feeling? It's a pretty solid run. Not bad. Not bad. Everything on the car is new. So that was Kept the wheels down that time. And he shifted it good. Brand new shifter. First time shifting it. So. That's awesome. How's the car doing? I don't know. I haven't seen it since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the spark plugs look fine. We're going to run it without water in it again. Dump the oil after round one. 
hopefully we don't, you know, dead hook into a wheelie and we win. Uh, well, I really want to race John, but uh, if he can't keep the belt on his motor, it's not gonna be a very good race. So we're gonna we're gonna death wheel his stuff and make his belt stay on. So here's your. Uh, <laughs> Here's how our day is gone. Last night, we ran an 868 at 160 in blasphemy and during, and you took off light. during testing. Today, we chopped John Chase off. We took him to Gapplebee's, plus, plus links on that car. And you did it with a chute hanging up. Oh, I was on the chute early. I didn't even get wide open according to the data. And tomorrow, we race again. And we're going all out. There's two chances for me to take him out and make him lose his all beard. Out. So what do you think, Derek Cooper? We're going to take him to Gap Central tomorrow. Gap Central? Mm -hmm. Where's that at? You got Gapplebee's and Gap Central? Mm -hmm. What's that part of? You were only at 63% throttle today. Yeah. So when we go 100% tomorrow, it's going to be on. Again, is going to pick up this top fuel motor and take it over to your pits and give it, and give it to the hoodigans so that I have a chance. To and they still ain't gonna win. <laughs> All right, go ahead, two horsemen. Whoa! Over your heads! Over your heads! Just kidding! Just kidding! How many wallies do you have, Clay? Right now, I've got three. Oh man, that's but cool. But I try Iron Man. I, I have fifty-three. 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 In top fuel. Yeah. Legend. Six Legend. time. I'll give you my whole spiel. Yeah, Six time yeah. top fuel world champion Clay Milliken, driver of the Arch <laughs> Plus Strut Masters top fuel drags. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> give me a high five, dog. Give me a high five. There it is. Nice. <laughs> Johnny Cash ain't sounding so good, dude. It's Willie Nelson. Oh, Willie Nelson ain't sounding good either. <laughs> so this is your favorite music, huh? It's a remix. It's gangster right there. <laughs> gonna go. Ooh, how's today gonna go? We're gonna stand around a bit in a river. We're gonna wait for the rain to stop. Then we're gonna push our car out of the trailer and uh, go right over there about 100 yards away in front of 10,000 people who are still gonna show up. And we're gonna break it off. John Chase lose that beard. Mm. One right pass ahead. today, we're done. How far do you think they're gonna make down the track before they blow up? I don't know, but at least they got a good size bottle and not the little weenie one. That, well, they're gonna need both them bottles. T-handled, open flush, goosh. I seen you drive, you got a heavy foot. Blow yourself. Monica! Danger to manifold! <laughs> I need two. I need by tonight. <laughs> Brad, what kind of shot are you guys running? Uh, 200 shot. Just a little bit. Yeah. Enough to uh, freak uh, John out right now. <laughs> He's literally pissing. He's like, what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm like, don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> here. It runs better. That's a good thing. I'm a little tired, not gonna lie. Making more power. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Good luck today. Thanks, dude. The motor's not entirely happy. You know, we're running it without any water in the radiator, and it'll have to come apart when we get home for sure, but I think it'll live through today. So, I'm doing good. What's up, man? Shut the hood.
Well, my starter just took a dump, which kind of stinks, but why am I not surprised? Hey, jack handle. Uh, yeah. I'm 1-0 against John Chase. This should be the one where I put the dagger in his heart and he loses his beard. We went to start the car to leave the pit. Starter's junk. So now, we have to pop start this and try to keep it running. I've never pop started my car with EFI. Wish us luck, dude. Jesus. I don't want to lose this race because the damn starter broke. It's incredible. So we're going to cross the crosswalk, get away from the people, let all of the professional pro stock racers go, and then we're gonna try to pop start this thing with the golf cart. I just made the worst pass of my life and still Starting managed to win. And, uh, we're going to continue shaving at the top end, guys. I got to go home and rebuild my engine. Car's a mess. I don't even care. Whatever. At least I'm not losing my beard. <laughs> That's so awkward. For Richie. Hey, Pomona. Mike Flanagan. Congratulations to Blasphemy Team. It was fun to watch those people come out here. Now. Lord, all right. Greatest team in the world, right here. Right here. Look at them. Hell yeah, these guys are the reason that trophy's hanging out right here. <laughs> Super tuner. Yeah. Get her, Brian. Look at that trophy. <laughs> Tied up your shop for four days to make that happen. Listen, it's worth it. <laughs> so cool.